It's Python on Hardware Time. Every single week we go over something really amazing and cool in the world of Python on Hardware, Lady Ada. It, yes. And does the newsletter. The newsletter is available every single week. I'll talk about that in a second. This week, though, besides all the amazing content that you can get that has our eval board thing that we did where you were running circuit Python super yes, fast. Yes, before, ESP32 before. ARM stuff is going on. You can look at the brains of the Pico 2. A endless amount of projects and more that's all Python on hardware related. We yes. are going to debut our video of code.circuitpython.org. Take it away. With Adafruit's CircuitPython Code Editor, you can edit code from a web browser. This lets you connect via Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or USB. The editor features autocomplete, a REPL serial monitor, and file management tools. We think this web workflow is great for dev boards that don't have native USB, like some ESP32 dev boards. To get started, we'll install CircuitPython onto our Feather ESP32 v2 using circuitpython.org. We'll search for the dev board on the website, launch the device page, and click Open Installer. On Mac and Windows, you may need to install the chip driver before installing CircuitPython on the Feather ESP32 v2. Select the Upgrade Install option and then click Connect. You can select your device from the pop-up dialog. Then click Continue. The website will erase the flash and install the latest version of CircuitPython. Once installed, you'll want to press the reset button on your dev board. We can then click close once it's completed. Now we can head over to code.circuitpython.org. Connect your dev board using our good USB data cable and then select the USB option and click connect to device. Next, we'll select our device from the list in the pop-up. Now we can click on the serial button at the bottom and verify our board is connected. We can click Open in the top menu and see all of the files and folders on our freshly installed CircuitPython drive. I'll select the code.py file and click Open. Now we can write some quick demo code. Here we have a simple rainbow animation for the built-in NeoPixel. We'll want to install some libraries, so I'll open the library folder and upload the NeoPixel library. We can then use the navigation buttons to return to the root of the drive. I'll click Save and Run. Our NeoPixel glows and we can see our output in the REPL serial monitor. We think this is a great way to write and develop CircuitPython code. We hope this inspires you to try out the CircuitPython code editor. Okay, so check that out. You get all the Python on hardware news delivered every single week to your inbox, adafruitdaily.com. And it's spam free. You can get it on the blog, you can get it on RSS, you can get it on GitHub, all sorts of ways. Go get it. All right. It's open source hardware time. First up, believe it or not, a lot of people don't know that Teeny USB, which is used by top companies around the world, the open source way, Lydia will tell you all the things it does, is. Yeah. Completely funded by Adafruit. Um, a lot of companies use it, and then they, and they're and more, like, and more every day. Th there's companies that um, are like, oh, yeah, uh, we don't like Adafruit, but uh, we love their uh, free software that runs everything. So, Lady, you know what exactly is um, Teeny USB? What is it? Teeny USB is. A new, and there's a new release too. Yeah, let's go to that. Okay, so um, Teeny USB is a totally open source, freely licensed, like MIT licensed. It's only mentioned USB. Stack well. Yeah, no, no, we, we look. We don't make a big deal about it. We, but, but we thought we'd mention it. Um, well, in fact, it started before he joined Adafruit. Yeah, like since then, it's yeah. It's, it's, been, completely, it's, been like eight it's a completely funded open source project by Adafruit. Yeah. Um. So it's an open source USB firmware that if you have a chip and you have like a USB peripheral, and oftentimes you buy that you buy or lease the USB peripheral, whatever it's called, you license it from some company like Synopsys or whatever. Or sometimes you develop it in house. Um, but just because you have a USB peripheral doesn't mean it, it's easy for people to actually turn that into a USB keyboard, like say in the Doom keyboard thing, yeah. like show. or a mouse, or a joystick, or a disk drive, or a serial device. Um, you have to have all the stack that does all the stuff in between that converts your USB peripheral into like MIDI or music or data, whatever, um, a sound. So uh, TeenUSB is a host and device stack that is, again, totally fully licensed freely. Which means that companies that have chips 
they save a ton of money because instead of having to manage and write their own stack, which believe me would cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, all they have to do is add support for their chip um, into the code for Teeny USB, and we make it really easy. And like we support, uh, like Espressif uses it, um, Analog Maxim uses it, um, Arduinosos uses it. The Arduino, Arduino uses Arduino it. uses it. Um, the RP twenty three fifty. Uh, and RP2040 use it, which means that everything that uses. Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, but be, like, everybody, okay. yeah, everybody uses it. Um, yeah, like people who are competitors of ours, which we don't think, we think they're friends. Um, we just like to do skateboard tricks and try to do the best tricks. Um, everyone uses it. It's great. Uh, ST doesn't use it, but their stuff kind of sucks. Um, I think I think maybe Nordic started using Teeny USB, and if not, they should. Um, so uh, there's two type of people in the world: yeah. folks that should use Teeny USB and folks that do. It's actually just easier for everybody to do because the thing is, is that then there's just like one like why we invent everything over and over again. Anyway, so we did a new release, and I'm trying to remember what the release notes are. Do you want the release notes? Yeah. Um, oh, go... sorry, the release notes are here. Um, I think we did okay. So we did. There's a lot of bug fixes. We did um, CH32 V203, so that was the big one. It's a, very, it's a 40 cent Risk Five core. Um, that was something I requested. And that actually took a lot of time because there was a lot of race conditions he found. Uh, keep going. MCXA, I don't know the chip. Oh, a lot of work with the Max 3421E. So this is cool because this is a, this is a SPI to USB host chip which we use in like our USB host feather wing and there's USB host shields. And if you want to take advantage of all the stuff that Team USB has done, um, you can now create Teeny USB devices that um, use the Max 20, uh, was it 34, 3421E, which means that chips that don't have native USB or if only have one USB device and you also want USB host, uh, now have a solution. So that was a base. This is actually a lot of stuff. And then uh, can you keep going back? Um, MSP 430 stuff, um, some Nordic fixes some 2040 and then yeah some more wch okay. and then a bunch of a bunch of more fixes and stuff Ooh. thanks to everybody who did prs by the way um it's like was there a lot of people contributing to the teen usb yeah. project so this is one of our um you know i i'd like to say that this is a success story for Adafruit because uh, micropython uses it micropython uses it uh because it's not just for adafruit and we want the world to use it and yes other people who like compete with our hardware or us or like whatever their problem is you know they um, write usb stacks but nobody likes we just that. like it, we'd rather just have something that can get everybody going as fast as possible and not reinvent the wheel over and over and we fund it with money and um I'll get that money yeah and uh, please buy something of course don't have to but we've done that with um we work with micropython we support and sponsor micropython and we have our open source educational fork called circuit python all these things can coexist too. So yeah. anyways, we're hoping to get the word out about this more because it's like, if we don't toot our horn, others won't. I think we're going to tell people like once every two, three months. Yeah, okay. so we're going to do a blog post every release. Yeah, great. To the chase. Okay.